Now this is a proper bowl of ramen. Hey guys, salut, it's Alex. Salut! Welcome back to the Ramen Addiction series. The previous episode was all about the super concentrated, you know, super intensely salty tare sauce. This one is all about fat, like how to make the fourth element of the perfect bowl of ramen, the aroma oil. But you know, before we dive straight into recipes and a bit of a blue fridge theory, uh, we need to understand first what is the role of the aroma oil in the perfect bowl of ramen. So usually it is added at the bottom of the bowl along with the tare before adding any broth to it. By pouring the savory hot liquid quite Frankly, oil will first get a few extra layers of flavor and then sit on top of the soup. And that's the perfect spot to be picked up by the noodles as you slurp them <coughs> recklessly. Okay, right now let's make the first recipe. Uh, not exactly making a recipe, anyway. Sesame oil. If you're looking to up your ramen game, but you are lazy as then sesame oil works just fine. Simplicity is extreme sophistication. Sesame oil goes with any broth, any seasoning, any toppings, whatever. It's just so versatile. The first thing I notice is that it's easier to slurp. Mm. Quite simple. The sesame flavor is quite strong. You probably want to add just a few drops. Okay, next oil. Second recipe is scallion oil, a Shanghai staple. Chop up a few green onions and heat them up in a cup of neutral oil. That is canola oil right here. Remove them when they are crispy and light brown. Strain and there you go. Scallion oil. It's sweet, soft, but there is this, you know, crispy, naughty flavors just behind it. Something very homey. I guess we were using loads of onions at my place. The third aroma oil is schmaltz. You know that uh, deli staple. Technically, it's not oil. It's more likely to be fat, but also I mix it with oil, so it's not fat anymore. Does that make sense? Chop up a good amount of chicken skin and fat. Uh, these are just leftovers from a chicken dish I made earlier. Uh, good to know you really need a sharp knife for this. Lucky for you, I made a sharpening tutorial very recently on how to get your blunt slab in perfect condition. So you have no excuse. Then you want to boil everything gently in a non-stick pan along with a bunch of onions. After about 15 minutes, water will be evaporated and schmaltz will be there. As I told you, I usually blend it with canola oil, just so that it doesn't solidify in the fridge. It's funny because I've got the chicken flavor, but it's quite subtle, it's good. Uh, yeah. We can't just go on recklessly, you know, talking about the recipe without, you know, dealing with the uh, greasy, dirty theory first, okay? Okay, so uh, the terms oil and fat are often confused by people, even by me. I mean, especially by me, not that much, mostly by you. Yeah, whatever, the two terms are not swappable. They don't mean the same thing, but they are both part of the lipids. Let's just have a closer look. Oil are mostly made out of unsaturated fatty acids and they are liquid at room temperature. On the other hand, fat are mostly composed out of saturated fatty acid and they are solid. It's not that easy to write on this solid at room temperature. And that is fat in the strict sense because fat in the common sense also means lipid. It's just the word is fucked up. Never mind. Recipe number four, shrimp oil, a stir fry classic. So again, I'm using leftovers for this. Uh, pour a cup of oil in a saucepan and place it over medium low heat. Add loads of shrimp shells and a thumb of ginger. Cook those for about 15 minutes or until the shrimps turn almost transparent and then strain. Wow, what a vibrant color. 
smells so much like stir fry. Mm, it's not bad. It's not like. Wah! Okay, next. Aroma oil number five. Chili oil, but not your mama's chili oil. Sichuan chili oil. Unless, of course, your mama comes from Sichuan in China. Uh, then it's your mama chili oil. Add two teaspoons of ground Sichuan peppercorns in a heat resistant bowl. Then about 100 grams of chili flakes and one tablespoon of sesame seeds. Heat up a cup of canola oil along with star anise, cinnamon and ginger sliced until the oil is almost smoky. Remove spices and pour it over chilies. Let that infuse at least two hours in the fridge. I'm sweating already. <laughs> the color is out of this world! I think it's very good. I wouldn't see that in each and every bowl of ramen because it's quite powerful. I would love to use that with a shrimp ramen. Okay, next. So at the beginning I told you about uh, how to use the aroma oil, but aren't you a bit curious about how does it extract flavors from things? So I think we need to go back to like water and alcohol. Oil is a solvent. Yes, it's the same word as those floor cleaning solution, but, but no, it's not the same purpose. What do you want? If those solvents are very effective at, you know, dissolving flavors, like just stealing those flavors and sneaking them along, you know, all the way up to your mouth. And that works for all of them. But oil has this very specific and convenient tendency to stick to the teeth, to coat the mouth, and so to extend the experience of flavors. Okay, recipe number six, anchovy oil. Mm. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but bear with me. Remove guts and bellies from a bunch of dried anchovies and cook them in a cup of oil over low heat, along with ginger and coriander seeds. After about 30 minutes of super low heat, let everything cool down, then add a piece of kombu and let the whole thing marinate at least two hours in the fridge. Quick sniff. Oof, oof, very fishy. Ooh, it's smoother than just, you know, sniffing it from the bottle itself. Um, I don't know the roundness of the stock, probably. Ooh. And it's funny because it's very good. That surf and turf, you know, vibe brings out so much complexity and so much layers of flavor. Okay, next. Okay, final recipe in number seven, black garlic oil, as known as mayu. Add a cup of canola oil in a saucepan, a handful of chopped garlic cloves and cook them over medium-low heat until they start to brown. Now reduce heat to low and cook further until garlic turns completely black. It's burnt, it goes against everything I learned in cooking, but that's the way to make it, so... Transfer to a heat-proof bowl along with half a cup of sesame oil. Blend everything on a high speed. Done. It's tasting time! Let me tell you, that stuff is real! It smells good. It smells like a French dish. There is something which is slowly dragging me into this bowl. Yes, please. This is the one that brings the addiction to the furthest level. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Ramen Addiction series and that you did learn a few things along the way. I don't think that there is one video over on YouTube with seven different recipes. It's difficult to do seven with one hand. A like for that. So in case you missed it, I've got new merch. It's uh, available in the shop over on dftba.com. I'll put the link in the description box uh, down below. In the meantime, it's probably a good idea to subscribe if you want to, you know, catch up the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.